fast life to fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. Look, we are not the same. All right, guys, welcome to our IX podcast. This is episode three, and today we have us uh, with us today a very special guest, uh, Rosemary Petroni Martinez, uh, my wife, and actually the real partner behind everything that we get done here at IX and everything that I get to do in my life. So, Rosemary, welcome to today, and I know we're just gonna have a conversation here back and forth and talk a little bit about you know the beginnings of maybe us, the beginnings of IX, and kind of where we're at right now and what's to come in the future. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So, Rosemary, let's I guess start a little bit. Um, you know, we 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 get to meet a lot of people in our business, and I know we've shared our story with a lot of people in the past. But a lot of our IX community right now kind of doesn't know maybe a little bit about us, who we are as a couple, and maybe even some of the ups and downs we've gone through. So, you okay having that conversation? Well, I guess. Uh just a little bit about me. It's I, I come from Peru. I'm from Lima, Peru. Um, I came here to the United States to look for a better life. Um, and I was so excited when I came here. Very grateful. I love this beautiful country. Um, but when I got here, it, it was definitely better uh, in my situation. But I wasn't happy, you know. I wasn't accomplishing the things that I wanted to in my life. And so that was rough for me. Um, and then, of course, I met you and uh, things change. <laughs> yeah, but let's, let's talk about that real quick. Let's okay. take a pause. So, you know, you get here and when you got to the States, what year was it? 2008. Okay, so 2008, you get here. And that's actually right when what they call the Great Recession, right? So the U the U.S. was not in a good situation. Um, Peru wasn't in, it was probably in a worse situation, if you yeah. will, at least for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then you get here and you guys start establishing your life here in the U.S. What was that process like? Was it easy? Uh, honestly, it was maybe a little bit hard at first, but it was, I know you guys were on a recession and all that, but for us wasn't, it was like, <laughs> a hundred times better than than Peru, yeah. you know, for our situation, yeah. you know. So. And then so you guys get here and then it, when you get here, let's fast forward maybe a year or so. What are you guys doing on a daily? Like, do you guys have all this freedom? You have this life that you want or what are you going through? Here in the United States? Uh, no, actually, we had to like uh, find two jobs. Uh, my mom will go and work with me uh, night shift. Uh, my dad will work all day. Uh, we will just try to find whatever we can to kind of survive at first because we didn't have a home. We didn't have anything. We did find a lot of good people here, which I'm always grateful for. Um, but it was really hard. Like we barely see each other and, you know, just kind of like go to work and sleep and that's it. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about real quick. So. I'm sure you in Peru, when you thought you were coming to the U.S., they always talk about like the American dream, right? I don't know if you heard Everybody about that. Everybody talks about that. But when you got here, you're essentially just work, 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 mm -hmm. see your family for a couple hours, maybe not even have dinner together. Maybe your dad was leaving. So is that kind of what you went through as well? Is it that is. kind of a little bit of a deception? Or how do you it feel about that? It is because you, I think everybody uh, from outside the U.S., they think the American dream is like, oh, you make so much money and then you sp uh, spend time with your family. It is not that way. Um, and I guess the, the the ultimate goal will be to be with your family. And mm -hmm. that wasn't happening, happening here. Yeah. So for me, that was kind of like, yeah. I, I wasn't, it wasn't what I really wanted to. Still grateful though, you yeah. know, we, we did. Um, you got a car when you got here? I got a car. You learned to drive? I learned to drive. Um, it, it, just such a good people. We came here, uh, Utah, right? And so, well, we went to California, but then we came here and, and it was hard, but we were still very grateful, I guess, with that mentality. Okay. But I wanted more. Yeah. I wanted my family. Well, then, right? And then so you then that was 2008. 2008. You work for two years. Mm -hmm. 2010 comes around. And I know you took a trip down. This is maybe your first trip back down to uh, Peru, right? And I met the love of my life. <laughs> and that's where we met, right? So I, I actually went down to Lima for business. Yeah. I was doing a network marketing company. I was the first time I was doing network marketing outside of the U.S., 
Uh, this is in 2010, so it's before Uber, before Airbnb, oh. before Zoom, before WhatsApp. I and think Facebook was barely, bar- well, barely. Well, Facebook had a couple years, but it was still like old. Yeah. yeah. You know? It was barely starting. Skype. Uh, Skype, yeah. Skype, MSN Messenger, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so um, I get down to Peru. I rent a vacation rental. So again, before Airbnb. So it was an Airbnb. Yeah. And I start doing these meetings down there. And one of my uh, colleagues in the business comes over and says, oh, I know some people from Peru. Um, and I tell them, hey, you know, invite them over. Let's talk to them about this business. Let's get them some drinks. Let's show them some product and let's sign them up. Right. And I know um, I was sitting down doing a presentation, actually, uh, when you walked in the room mm-hmm. and I remember it and I saw you and I was like, wow, that was the first person that really kind of took my breath away. And I didn't speak that much Spanish. That's right. And I went <laughs> to try to talk to you. His, and- fir- his first word was uh, hermosa. And so that means beautiful in Spanish for those of you guys that don't know. (laughs) And so I went to go to try to talk to you and you kind of give me the cold shoulder, right? I try to give you the drink. I'm trying to talk to you in Spanish and trying to make jokes, but you kind of just uh, turn and walk away Mm -hmm. and... Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. But I, I already I was living in the US already for two years. And so I go back to Peru and I was like, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I was a lot against the MLM business starters. Like it, I, I, I did not believe in any any of that. And I was just there and I kind of wanted to just go, you know, but my sister is the one that took me there. So, yeah. So we, we met that night and then we, you know, it's it's actually um, a birthday of one of the guys that we're with, Patrick, and we go out to have dinner and I try to talk to you probably all night, right? We mm-hmm. go to dinner, I try to yeah. sit next to you, it doesn't work. Um, I try to sit next to you in the taxi that we're in, doesn't work. And we get to dinner and we have dinner and I was, this is like already three or four hours later and I yeah. so I'm like, okay, well, she wants nothing to do with me, so whatever. And we get back in the taxi to go back to my Airbnb. And I, um, your sister gets in the car with us and she says, hey, let's go dancing, right? Yeah. And that's the first time that I saw you. You kind of perk up all night and you got excited and you said yes. And I'm American. Well, I, I, I also I came I went back to Peru because I wanted to have fun because all you know, the first two years in the here in the United States, it was so hard. I mean, I worked so hard and I just wanted it a break. So I was very stressed. And so I, you know, go to Peru and kind of have fun. But yeah, yeah, so I got excited. So she was there to have fun and I'm there for business. Yeah. <laughs> and and she says, let's go dance. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to dance, right? Like hip hop, jump up and down. But he in Peru, they do like salsa dancing and what other types of dance? Like cumbias, merengues. So just Latin reggaeton. dancing, right? And I don't know anything <laughs> reggaeton that I knew. <laughs> that one's easy. Um, but anyways, you get excited. I say yes immediately without thinking. Yeah. And then I get to my apartment and I go into my room to go get changed. Mm-hmm. I go change my shirt, like freshen up, brush my teeth, whatever. And then I come out. And so this is six, like five, six hours later after we met. You're speaking English to one of my friends. <laughs> yeah. So why wouldn't you speak English to me, first of all? That's always been my my question. Because you started speak, <laughs> speaking Spanish to me. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to answer in Spanish. I don't know. Okay. But, yeah. yeah, I was sure. mean. <laughs> mean. That's, yeah. that's what I was looking yeah. for. And yeah. then, so you're speaking English and I walk up to you and I say, wait a minute, where are you from? And? And so I said, well, I'm from Peru. But I live in the U.S. Say. Oh, and I'm like, okay, what what part? And I said, uh, Utah. And I was like, what? That's where I'm from. Where where what like what city do you live in? And I answer, Bountiful. Bountiful. <laughs> That's the city I was living in. So we live five minutes away from each other. From each other, guys. So yeah, that and was so crazy. that's what, that was like the icebreaker, yeah. right? And we're like, oh wow, we live so close to each other. We live like uh, maybe like two miles, three miles away yeah. from each other. And so we went dancing and yes. we had a blast. We stayed out all morning or I should stay up till five in the morning all night. Yeah. Um, and then it was really fun. And then we kind of just hung out for the next two weeks while I was there. Yeah. And then I think everything started there um, yeah. until we, yeah, we, we started a relationship, I guess, because I thought it was going to be like a s- summer thing. F- summer fling. She thought yeah. she was going to have me for a little bit. Um, I know. And then, uh, no, we just kind of like, I don't know, it was just kind of natural. And um, 
Yeah. I don't know. And so we come back to the States and I keep trying to do my business and you're a non-believer, right? You're a non, you're like, you are, your, your lifestyle was like, I'm coming to this, your mindset, excuse me, was I'm coming to the U.S. to progress and live the American dream, which Mm -hmm. you were starting to do, but you thought, hey, I need to work hard. I need to have a good job. I need to study. uh, And I need- Well, that's all my parents taught me. That's all I saw in my life. There is no, you know, business- um, man in my house or anything like that. I mean, I always saw my dad working so hard and I thought that's the only way. So I was all against anything else. You know, he he comes and tells me, well, you can recruit people and then you can make money. I was like, oh my gosh, go get a job or, you know, go get a degree. So I wasn't happy with our relationship, um, especially because he wanted to marry me and I wanted to marry him because I love him but his dreams for me was just like I was just so close minded and he's like well we're gonna make you know I'm gonna make so much money and this and that but but for me in my head it was like no you need to go to school you need to have a degree and that's the only way Mm -hmm. you can make money I'm not against you know going to school or college or anything like that but but for me that was the only way so and so we had this started to cause kind of like one of the biggest obstacles in the in our commitment yeah. committed relationship a lot of problems or our you know the, the initial stages yeah. of how are we going to overcome this right because I didn't want to yeah. leave that to me this was my dream I left you know before I met you I was in the military and I left the military to do this business and that was what I wanted right. to do right yes and mm-hmm. I wasn't going to leave this dream that I had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause it was at, it was that at that point, it was a dream. Uh, and it took a lot of years to accomplish, but you were an non So it took a long time for us to overcome this and to start saying, okay, we can make some money. Mm-hmm. And I know there was like a little bit of resentment in our, in our relationship in yeah. the beginning before we yeah, got married. Sure. I and mean, even when we got married, it's like, yeah. I wasn't making that much money. I was making a couple thousand dollars a month and mm-hmm. you were working a job supporting us and helping to pay rent and all yeah, these things. Yeah, I guess I was just a little bit upset because I used to work more than you, mm-hmm. but uh, in a different way, right? Like yeah. uh, more, more hours, hours, like yeah. 12 hours a day, and you were there on your computer, and that would make me super mad, but it was just a different way, and uh, we will always fight all yeah. the time, and so, yeah, that, it was really hard. And so, and then you get, you know, in, in this business that I was in, you get people coming in, you know, and, and I would say the worst, the best part about network marketing is you get to help people. Yeah. The worst part about network marketing, it's people based. So you don't know who's coming into your life and then your life becomes your, your, you are your business, right? So your, you, your brand is your personal brand. You as, you know, Joe Martinez Mm -hmm. or Martinez family. And then you get all these random people coming in they have different beliefs. Uh, Some have good intentions, some have bad intentions. So it's really hard. Um, And so we got into those struggles for, for quite a bit. And we started, we, we got kind of, I don't want to say lucky, but we built the business long enough that we started making money. Yeah. And it started to get fun, right? Because then we could start buying, like, we bought a new car, right, mm-hmm. from yeah. our business. Yeah. And we were able to travel down to South America as a family. Yeah. We had, our, we had Luciana, our first daughter. Luciana. She'll and travel with us And then we everywhere. would go everywhere with her. We'd hang out. And it was good for a few years. And it then, was fun. And then that lasted, like, two, a little less than two years. Well, I think, yes, it did. You know, so um, unfortunately, some companies... You know, we're not making the right decisions and and it doesn't mean they were bad, Yeah, I think. Uh, but it kind of messed up all our plans and everything. And also a lot of people there is. See, uh, something that you have to understand with this is like if you're going to do this business, you have to know that there is you're going to meet good people and also not so good, good people, people. Mm-hmm. unfortunately. And they when they see you growing, it, it just... I don't know. It just caused them these bad feelings and they kind of want to destroy you. I don't, I don't know. I don't, it, it happened to us. Mm-hmm. And, and so it, it was the point of like, you either give up or you keep going. Yep. And I'm grateful that you, you did keep going. And so, but yeah. Well, let's talk about that real quick. Like, let's talk about our first failure, right? Yeah. And it not, like you said, it wasn't because we failed. It's because 
of the decisions other people made that caused yeah. the business to fail. Mm-hmm. And we had just decided to buy our first home. And yeah. it was a really right. large, yeah. really large home. Very we had large. a little bit of money in, in, in savings and we buy the home and then the business goes away. So we went from making, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month, you know, pretty good, stably, yeah. and some months higher to making zero dollars a month. Yeah. That's and it's so like, hard. how do you react to that? What do you do? And I know me and you both had different reactions. Yeah. And then at the same time, literally, we had this event here in Utah. And I don't know if you remember this. And yes. we were down at the uh, Salt Lake Temple Square and we were sitting in the visitor center. And um, there's a big statue of Christ and I was sitting right in front of it. And I had been getting a phone call from my aunt for the mm-hmm. last couple hours, but I was with some people, so I kept ignoring it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you walk up to me kind of crying with this look on your face and uh, you know, you tell me, and I'm, again, I'm sitting right in front of Christ, and it's like, Joe, your sister died. And it was the the weekend that we had this huge event, this huge conference that was supposed to take our business to the next level. But to me, that was the weekend that kind of tested me in business and mm-hmm. kind of took me down a little bit of a dark path, if you, you know, and, and in our marriage, in my personal life, in my spiritual life. And yeah. it was a, a moment for me of, of much... I don't want to say pain because I don't know if it hurt because of my beliefs that I now had because of, Mm. you know, my relationship with God, but it it still caused a lot of, it 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 caused a lot of problems for me moving Mm -hmm. forward. Right. Yeah, for Um, sure. And no, I, I I was a little bit worried about how, like, I didn't know how to tell you because you already lost your parents and your, you know, grandparents. And I know they were really close to you. So that was something that, and the business wasn't doing good at all. So yeah, that was, it was so hard for me to to tell you. Um, and then from that, again, you started having a lot of problems too, like, you know, emotional and all that, but yeah. Yeah. And so that was really tough. And then the next, basically the next, we just bought this home. Yeah. Um, I start going through this emotional trauma from, you know, becoming an orphan, if you will. I'm already an adult, but still you, you feel like your entire family has left you and you're the only one here on this earth. And it's not a it's not a fun feeling. Right. Because mm-hmm. you're so used to having a mom and a dad and a sister and like you no longer have those relationships anymore. So, you know, that caused me a lot of over the next few years, a lot of problems. But that was like the beginning. Right. And we didn't know what was going to happen. And. I just knew I had to keep moving forward to be able to keep the house, right? And we put ourselves in this situation. Let's talk a little bit. Let's get away from the emotional of yeah, it for a minute. I know. I'm going to cry. <laughs> but but let's talk a little <clears throat> bit about the financial of it, right? Yeah. So we have a lot of people that follow us, and a lot of them are making decent money, yeah. right? But what from our downfalls, we've always told people, look, don't don't go and buy crazy luxury things. Don't yeah. go and buy luxury brands unless you can really afford it. Like if you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars already in and investment accounts and, and say you have your emergency fund set up. Yeah. So we try to teach people the right things to do with their money because we've gone through those experiences for the for those first I should say for the last five or six years, we were kind of what's considered house poor. We bought this million dollar home, but then we were spending all our monthly just to survive and just to maintain the house. How did that feel for you? Yeah, it was crazy. But I think we we had to unfortunately learn in just the most horrible way. But um, it just for us was really hard because we you need to be careful who you follow Mm -hmm. so in that time we will follow like the people that oh you get the nice car and then you get the nice things and like the you know all the the expensive things and so that's what i wanted and so in you too right and so we started by buying like the audi and like this beautiful home and all that um i i don't think we made a mistake on the house to be honest with you now exactly yeah but um because we never really started with you know everybody started with a small house and then a big one and then well we we went all the way here and so that that was kind of um traumatic to me because it's like how are we gonna make the payments now and this and that and honestly we wasted our money for the first i don't know five years five years years. and i was just crying and mad and and it's like oh because we couldn't do anything yeah we see all these people going out having fun going skiing traveling Mm -hmm. a lot lot of our colleagues that are friends of ours yeah 
friends of ours that they start traveling all over the world yeah. and we're stuck and, in and this then, house. Yeah, and then but but also we were following those kind of people, right? They were focusing more on like traveling and all that. And so for me that was really like frustrating. So anyways, um with you know, we never follow the people that is always quiet. Like they don't ever post much or this and that because it's like, oh, that's boring. You know, now I do follow those kind of people. But anyways, for uh, I think um, we had a good family members, you know, um, well, in your side. Anyways, uh, auntie, uh, she's amazing. You know, she kind of rescued us from from losing the house. And but we were about to lose this house for sure. Um, so that was Oh my goodness, I, that was very sad. Yeah. <laughs> but and then and then the next few years, like I said, so we we get this house, we go through these business, we go through multiple businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And I build a business up, and I think you've seen me build a business up when we start making, you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand yeah. dollars a month. I start consulting. I do these different things to build businesses all over the world, and then it just goes away. Yeah. And then I build another business up over the course of another two years, and then it goes away. Yeah. And every single time it was like, not because I was failing, it's because the people that we were involved in, involved with in that business. But you were starting starting to doubt yourself too because of those people, un right? Until like, I, and exactly, but until I realized that I was not failing, mm -hmm. other people were causing me to fail. Yeah. And so... And that's where we kind of get to this point where we, I want to talk about like the beginnings of IX, IX and what we've built. And I know we were in a previous company and I kind of had the inspiration for the taglines that you see all over the place, innovate, inspire and impact. Yeah. And IX is about self growth and helping people because it truly was supposed to be a self betterment platform to help other people develop as, as human beings, yeah. right? And because, you know, I always was taught, look, if you want to make more money, be a better person, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so the more you can develop on your yourself, the more money you're going to make. It doesn't matter if it's in your profession, in your career, in business, you're just going to be able to attract more uh, in, 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 into your life, whether yeah. that's financially or better people. And so... You know, we we at this point at the foundation of IX, we, me and you in our relationship and our marriage, we're going through basically a, you know, marital turmoil, right? Yes. Uh, we we kind of get separated. We separated, and, yeah. And we're kind of don't know what to do moving forward. You want to go down your path. I want to go down my path. Yeah. And we are kind of stuck in this place where I, I was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to split. And then all of a sudden I kind of just realized like, this is not the route that I want to be going. And yeah. I know it's not as simple as just saying this, but we, you know, we sit down, we talk and we both make changes in, in our life. And so I, 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 I wanna, think we realized that we needed to change. Change. And that's what I want to talk about. Ourself is first, you yeah. went on your journey to find yourself Definitely, yeah. separate. Mm -hmm. And I went on my journey to find myself. Your journey was a lot better. My yes. journey was, <laughs> was not so good. Yeah. But talk about your journey. Because I know in that at that point, and I want to just kind of highlight this and talk... In that journey, you kind of found you were kind of anti MLM, anti network marketing, even anti business to a point, but you found something that you were passionate about in uh, the hypno space yeah. and the meditation space and quantum stuff. And I know it's stuff that I kind of had believed in before, but I didn't get into the depth that you did. But yeah. talk about that on your journey. Well, first of all, um, I realized when I found out hypnotherapy and all that, um, I realized that my head was programmed already with things that, you know, maybe my pa my parents taught me. And then I had all that in my head. And then I keep repeating the same patterns. And I was like, this is, I'm not living my life. I'm living their life. And so if I want to follow their life, and I'm seeing right now their mm -hmm. results, and I don't want to be mean to 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 them. But the in business wife, I mean, they are amazing. I love them. But in business, it's not what I want, mm -hmm. right? So for me, that was a big awaken. Like mm -hmm. I was like, no, I I need to start creating my own thoughts, my own habits, my own patterns. Like I want my own things, right? So I, I found out that you could, you can actually reprogram your mind, your subconscious, 
and become a different person. And you can get absolutely whatever you want in terms of health, um, you know, uh, business, financial, everything. Relationships. Really. Relationships. With your husband. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Actually, um, so going back to that, it's uh, when we actually, when we separate it, which a lot of people don't know, but yeah. we openly talk about it and why we do that is because we we want you to instead of going through that learn and i hope you really do because it it it's easier to learn than going through well, that it's and also it's, a little bit of a misconception for people right because they see like oh joe and rosemary and they see this and it's not just joe and rosemary but it can be anybody that you see on social media mm -hmm. because that's the world we live in yeah you see all these couples out there or you know couples or even if they're still just dating but it looks like they're having this amazing life like we're the happy family yeah because they're just posting we, this 15 mm -hmm. second snapshot yeah for but sure but the rest of the time it's like they're not happy you know what i mean they're yeah. 15 minute you know 15 second or 60 second reel and that's the highlight of their day but they don't show like the behind the scenes mm -hmm. yeah and i know we want people to understand like look we've been through our hardships oh yeah like i've i've you know, lost my entire family. We've yeah. gone through separations in our marriages, the ups and downs. We've lost businesses. Yeah. You know, and so, and we, we want people to know that there is hope, right? There and, is. But it comes a lot of work. Yeah. And the the tool that you found was hypnotherapy, and the thing that I found was just regular regular therapy, and then you got me into into the into hypno and meditate, meditation 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 right. for me was a big big thing so again it's it was if you want to change something in your life you have to change yourself uh, all the time that i was in my marriage i always tried to change you mm -hmm. and it that was the worst mistake uh when i finally realized when i we finally like not finally but we separated i was like okay this is my time this is my time. I get to change. I get to do uh, the things that I, I I need to change the the the, the things inside of me, right? And so I, it, there was a lot of problems in me that I needed to fix from my past. It you know, and so I did. I started that journey. I changed little by little. That's something that I tell people. It's like you need to start with little things because if you want to change everything at once, it's just not going to work. And sometimes we want the results right away. It's like, well, I want to make money like in two weeks or in a month. Well, that might not happen. You need to change a lot of things first in yourself um, and so in order for you to see changes in your actions and all that, right? Um, so it took me probably a year, I will say, to be honest with you. And I think you, you know, and, and I remember the first month and you were coming to me. It's like, no, just let's, let's just go back. Or, you know, he wanted kind of the the fast way, the, the, the easy way. But I was like, no, it's just not going to work that way. It has to be, you, you, we have to do a lot of work. And so that was hard. But it, I think it, it worked. I and mean, then that was around like Christmas time, 2019. 2019. And I were barely like starting to fix things. And then I start losing my, the business that was generating us an income for yeah. the last three years. And yeah. so stuff happened in that. We won't go through it on this discussion. But you do realize it was way different though. Because when, when you have your... So this is something, sorry, I want to really talk about. And, and um, yeah, I just want to focus on is like when you you're good when you're good with yourself when you're good with your family and then something outside of that happen it, it it's not gonna hit you the same it won't but if everything else is broken around you like your your relationship with your uh, wife or um your kids or your health is no good and then something else happened it, it just it's bad so for us we were doing good and as a family too, so I don't think it, it it was the same as when we did, you know, lost the other business. I think I don't know what no, do you and, think. And that's right. That's kind of where I was going mm -hmm. to, right? And then so we start we start fixing. I start fixing all this stuff over here in my life. Yeah, I feel really good, and then my business starts suffering. And mm -hmm. but again, it wasn't because it could have been because of decisions I made. Yeah. But ultimately, I could have saved that bit. But we just realized that wasn't the path I wanted to go down anymore. And Sorry, let me say something really quick. It was because we were tired. We were not treated good in, in any of the companies. And uh, we just... 
they always promise so much and then nothing happened really and uh we just kind of wanted to help more people but it just wasn't working and so it's like everybody was just like oh the owner the owner you know he makes all the money blah 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 and we were like i wish there is a company that can actually make money for everyone and uh you know and and that was where i took this idea that i had a few months before yeah. while i'm going through all these low points in my life and i feel like i was given this from you know up above from a divine inspiration and it was to innovate, inspire, and impact. And it was to create a platform. And you weren't, you, you didn't like it so much at the time. But I said, look, we're gonna create a platform, a company, a community mm -hmm. yeah. that is gonna. It's not for profit. It's to pay out. I didn't like that part, but I did like everything else of like. So, and what I meant by that impact. is like, look, all, we always see all these companies out there with all this corporate fat and all these things. And look, yeah. I want to just create something that's gonna impact tens of thousands of lives and hundreds of thousands of lives and then millions of lives yeah. um, through our technology, through our education, through our teachings, through these podcasts, through the content that we produce. And we're barely getting there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is two and a half years later. And just to really quickly make a note here, two and a half years later, we just broke a hundred or sorry, $200 million in sales in yeah. our second full year in business yeah okay and so let's but let's not go into that right now but what what i want people to understand is we started this in a place of we started it out of necessity and i remember i had four thousand dollars in my bank account i have a screenshot of the day we started four thousand yeah. and some change I didn't know how we were going to get a back office. Because I took all the money. Yeah, she took all the money out of the bank account. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just uh, kidding. <laughs> $4,000 in the bank account. We're starting this company. And usually network marketing companies, they have millions of dollars in funding, $5 yeah. million, $10 million. Yeah. But to me, that's something of the past. And if you can be resourceful, you can be responsible, you can go out there and build a company in today's gig economy in today's cloud-based environment and one of the blessings that we had and i'm sorry for saying it calling it a blessing but january 2020 okay that's when we decided to start the company we didn't get started right. till about april mm -hmm. but in that three-month period that's when covid was really hitting right, by started. march they were putting all of the latin american countries into lockdown Lockdowns. and they were putting india into lockdown yeah. And so we started couldn't go out, we couldn't started the anything. company yeah. right when they were right when the lockdowns hit yeah. for the markets that yeah. we build in in India and in Latin America. Yeah. And we we didn't know what we were going to do, but it was probably one of the best it's, things that could happen for our business, for our family and for all the people that follow us. For all of them, yeah. For all the people mm -hmm. that follow us and believed in us and yeah. and got started with us because it impacted their life because it gave them a way to make money online many people that couldn't go to work couldn't go out these people were blessed by uh of, of course heavenly father uh god you know we believe a lot in him and and we have a strong relationship with him uh and then he helped us um create this you know this company and it helped others when they couldn't do anything but it was like this blessing of online you know business and all that and remote, it was just like all the people starting to learn to do remote work yeah. remote working like we've been doing this for the last 10 years <laughs> guys know. come on yeah and yeah, so it yeah. was really easy transition for yeah. us and we helped a lot of people make that transition we partnered with some great Such people yeah. barrage and some other people out of india that we just grew we started a great with business. him actually yeah. Yeah. yeah and he hit the number one money earner in our industry yes. last month yes. uh, december we just hit the number one company as far as momentum yeah. in our, uh, you know, a, a forum that we're in business for home. And so it's it's really cool to see what's going on. It's exciting. Um, he what, actually started this like like also in a bad place, yeah. which if, if if people don't know. And, and we'll do but, a, hopefully yeah, we'll, we'll do, do a podcast yeah, with yeah, Barrage yeah. here yeah. soon. But let's talk a little bit about kind of where we're going with IX. What do you think the vision is? And I know we're just starting these podcasts and I hope they're, our hope is that they're, they're, out there to inspire people, yeah, whether they're yeah. going through relationship problems or business problems, financial problems. We want to be able to, through our community, teach pe other people to teach other people to yes. teach other people mm -hmm. the stuff that you don't learn in school, the stuff yeah. that you don't learn in college, yeah. and go out there and, and live a better life. And you won't, you won't learn these things in college or school. Unfortunately, you know, I think we are right now in a situation that 
we need to learn from the people that already gone through that. Um, so yeah, but but our vision, it's pretty much. I know a lot of people is worried. It's like how how long this is gonna last? We can't tell you how long, but we have the heart that we want this to last forever if we if we can, and we're doing our best. And again, I want to talk about a little bit about Joe because, um, you know, I yes, of course, I was a little bit like. Uh, doubting it because it's like you're giving pretty much all the money to the people right and that's okay but then how are you gonna you know sustain the company and it's been working amazingly I mean the people like it and I'm happy they are uh, you know many people are blessed so we're hoping that we can stay here for a very long time we cannot tell you how long but we have God with us he knows that we're doing the right thing and I hope you know that we, we are doing that. We're trying to anyways. I think it's all just based on intentions, right? Yeah. What are your intentions? The, the intentions of IX in the beginning was to pay out, to yeah. help the people. Mm -hmm. And as long as we can keep the company sustainable and the company can have enough to get by with, yeah. that's all that's important. Yeah. And I've always told people, look, we're only going to do three things as owners. We're going to give you a good quality product or service that you can put your name behind. Yeah. We're going to pay you your affiliate commissions on time, wherever you're at around the world. Yeah. And you know, sometimes me, I'm, we're doing <laughs> stuff on Saturday, pay commissions. You get so do that. crazy. And then like, the, hey, these people need to get paid before Christmas. Because I remember what it's like to not because have money we before went through Christmas. That. Exactly. We went through it. And I was like. Getting a payment on the weekend helps it. you so much. Yes. And you're barely getting by with the mm -hmm. mortgage. You're this, this yeah. payment. And you can't sure. wait 15 days. You can't wait five days. You're yeah. like, you need it now. So mm -hmm. I remember what that's like. And the third thing is to keep the lights on, right? Yeah. You see these signs behind us. They, they need power. They need electricity. That means the company needs to be sustainable. Yeah. And that's what we're setting out to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you said, we hope that it lasts. You know, we have the hope that our products and services last a good time. The great thing about our platform is we can go into anything. If we want to launch a physical product, a consumable product tomorrow, we want to launch an e-commerce yeah. platform. We want to launch more education. We want to go into this space. We can do that. For and sure. that's what we're set up to do. So yeah. um, I know those are the, most of the topics I wanted to cover. Yeah. If you have any final words you want to close out with. No, I just kind of want to, um, again, tell people that, that we care about you uh, and that we are exactly like you. We might be the owners, but we have to work exactly like you. I don't know if they know that, but we have to build in order for us to make money too, because that that's how Joe built the compensation plan and how he built everything. So I, you know, we work hard. We know that we, we, we knew yeah. we could do it. So we were not scared. So we're doing that. We're also building at the same time and trying to, um, not trying, but keeping this company alive and i think it's gonna be like that for for a very long time we we have a lot of faith in that so yep and there's a lot still a lot of work to do there's a lot a of products lot of work, to look yeah. out there's a lot of technology that's coming I a know, lot of yeah. new people that are coming into this and so uh we're excited for 20, what 2023 holds for us and i know we have an event coming up here in salt lake city yes. and we're going to dubai we're so excited for this event we're very very excited so and also i wanted to say something you know a lot of people like we get a lot of complaints too that's normal and but please understand i, I hope with this you understand that we also like trying to do our best. Like, you know, we, we don't have experience. We're not in perfect. The, we're not yeah. perfect, but but we're doing everything for you. I promise you, it's a, like, we don't stop <laughs> at all. At least him, he's like going all the time to the try to fix everything. Uh, and we're doing it for you. And and why? Because when we help, we know this. When you help someone else, when, and, and imagine if you just, just help one people, you get that back. You know, you give and then... You get it back. Mm -hmm. um, so we're like helping millions, you know, and so we're just want to keep doing that because we know that we're going to get blessed. So I think that's something that you guys should do as well. And if you want to get more right. And I've learned one thing. You can't make everybody happy, yeah. unfortunately, and you can't make everybody happy at the same time because sometimes people are happy. And then they're upset about something, yeah. but the other person is happy. And I think the philosophy that you just said is, I think there's two things. Number one that I want to just kind of close with is, you know, we want to start with the end in mind. So what is our end goal? Our end goal was to create a platform that could help the average person change their life in this digital economy. I think we're doing that. We've yeah. always had that in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So every decision that we have in our in our 
business making administrative decisions. It's, is that going to help the newest person getting involved? And then number two, and this is Zig Ziglar's philosophy, help enough people get what they want and you're going to get what you want. And that's what you just said. Where our goal is at first, now let's help tens of thousands of people yeah. change their life, which we did through the pandemic. Check. Our next goal is how can we impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of people in our expansion plan throughout mm. Europe and Asia and Latin America and North America. Yeah. Um, so that's what our goal is, guys. Uh, these podcasts are so they can get a little bit of insight, whether from us as owners or the product or whoever, whatever special guest we have on for the week. So I yeah. hope you guys enjoy them. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, follow us on Instagram or ixglobal.official and really appreciate you guys. And Rosemary, thanks for being on with us. Of course. We love you. Life full of circles, we out the AFO. It's a fast life.